today to the seventh of seven sermons considering Jesus, friend of sinners. And in the selections which I have made for these seven sermons, I have taken pains to look at different people, men and women, young and old, those who are wealthy and those who are poor, those who were robust and those who were sickly, those who were native born in the land of Israel and those who were from foreign soil, all to underline that Jesus reached out to people. He cared for people. He loved people. He loved Peter, the first one that we considered. He loved the Samaritan woman there by the well of Samaria, drawing, drawing water when others would not come near to her. He loved Zacchaeus, that tax collector who others shunned. He loved the paralytic who was lowered through the roof by his friends because there was no other way to get the man near to Jesus. Jesus loved that Syrophoenician woman at a distance from the land of Israel there with her demon-possessed daughter in desperate and urgent need. Jesus loved the rich young ruler who came to Jesus saying, what yet do I lack? People who were shunned, people who were considered to be utterly successful by the measure of this world. Jesus came to them. Jesus loved them. Jesus with open hand reached out to them and he proclaimed to them life. But as we conclude, I want most especially to talk about one man who you know well, the Apostle Paul. Jesus was his friend also. And I speak of the Apostle Paul especially because Paul spoke of himself as the chief of sinners, the worst of sinners the foremost of all because I want us to know that Jesus cares for each and every one of us regardless of whether we are successful or whether we are shunned by this world whether we be a man or a woman whether be we wealthy or whether we be poor whether we be healthy or whether we be sickly Jesus cares for all of us but there is always someone who says oh you don't understand what my life has been like you don't understand what a mess it has become and what a mess that I have made of it you don't understand and the explanations go on but I want you to hear not from me but I want you to hear from the scriptures what Paul had to say that he was the chief of sinners but yet he obtained mercy that God's hand was reaching out to him I take you to 1st Timothy chapter 1 and beginning I read at verse 12. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, the Apostle Paul writes to his young associate Timothy, who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, putting me into service even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor, yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was more abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners among whom I am foremost of all. Paul himself saying, I am foremost of all. Paul knew what he had been like. It was unavoidable that he had been a persecutor, that he had been aggressor. We read of him well in Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 9, how that he went from place to place grabbing hold of Christians, those who confessed the name of Jesus Christ, those who looked to him for the salvation, the need of their soul. He would grab them. He would seek to make them blaspheme to say, deny the name of Jesus, deny that he is the Son of God, deny that he is the Savior, deny that he is the Messiah whom we have long looked for. Paul called upon these people with vicious hands, with rough hands, and those who he could not convince to blaspheme, he would take them to prison, and some even going to their very death, and Paul in Acts chapter 9, he was on his way to Damascus with others and with a document in his hand so that he might take those who confessed Christ there, 
those who were Jews, that by the power of the Sanhedrin and by the power of the religious leaders, he might once again imprison them and that he might treat them so abominably. Paul, he was eager that people might not come to know Jesus Christ. He thought of Jesus as a liar, as a deceiver. And so Paul, in such manner, was living out his days. But Paul was accosted, Acts chapter 9. Paul was stopped in his tracks. The kindness of Jesus Christ reached out to the Apostle Paul, and there he became a trophy of God's grace. You see, previously, Paul was his own man. But God reached down and said, Paul, I am going to be a true friend to you. I am going to stop you in your hell-bound way. I am going to stop you by blinding you and striking you to the ground. That doesn't sound like a friend. But Jesus was a true friend to Paul that day. And Paul, with his blinded eyes, looked up and he said, Who are you, Lord? And Jesus said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. And Jesus gave him instructions that he was to go into Damascus and wait there. And there he did, fasting and praying. His sight was restored, both his physical sight, but most importantly, his spiritual sight. And he could see what he had never seen before, that Jesus truly was the Son of God, that the Old Testament scriptures spoke of him. And he studied them intently to understand anew this friend who had reached out to him with such love, such kindness, such mercy, and such grace. Friend, Jesus is reaching out to you also. You might say, I'm the chief of sinners. Well, Jesus cares for you. Jesus cared 2,000 years ago for a man by the name of Saul, who indeed was, by his own confession, the chief, the foremost, the worst of sinners. Jesus cares for you. He loves you. He died on Calvary's cross for you, that you might have life in his name. The Apostle Paul, what did he do? Did he sit down and enjoy the salvation which Christ had provided for him? No. He allowed Christ to work through him. So often we read in the scriptures about what Paul did here and there and what Peter did here and there and what others did, but you see it was Christ working through yielded vessels. Christ working through vessels that God had taken and cleaned and had made holy for his purpose. And so once a person comes to the Lord and confesses his name, it's right and proper that there be a yielded life. In Romans chapter 9, or chapter 12 and verse 1, Paul makes his appeal to the Christians in Rome. He says, I appeal to you, live your lives as yielded vessels to the Lord Jesus Christ now understanding all that he has done for you the Apostle Paul did exactly that he gave his life he gave his all but he always saw that it was the grace of God working through him it was not Paul's effort it was not Paul's deeds it was not Paul's good works it was Christ working through him Paul indeed had become a trophy of God's great grace and it was just like the grace of God, just like the plan of God to take the worst of sinners and to show this world what God could do by taking that blasphemer and transforming him into the Apostle Paul, the one who would walk through the mountains of the Mediterranean world through Turkey and through Greece and he would carry the gospel, carry the good news of Jesus risen from the dead that others might know. Oh, will you come to know him today? Oh, you might be a man or a woman. You might be young or you might be old. You might be sickly or you might be healthy, but Jesus reaches out to you. Receive his salvation today.